Today I'm going to be giving you 23 of the best travel hacks to make your traveling easier and cheaper. If you don't know me, I'm Joel and I've traveled to over 30 countries over the last five years and I wanna share this knowledge with you to save money on your next trip. Let's start with number one and this is something you need before setting foot in another country and that is this visa check-in website. So this website is called the Passport Index and basically you can select your passport and the destination you're looking to travel to. So I'm from the UK so I'm gonna click U and then where is it? United Kingdom. And then I'm gonna choose a destination. Let's choose somewhere with a J. Um, Japan, what do I need? Visa free for 90 days. So it tells you exactly how long you've got and whether you need a visa or not. And this works for any country and it is so useful just to double check the requirements before entering the country. So number two is make sure you get travel cards. Travel cards are gonna save you so much money on ATM withdrawal fees, exchange fees. I highly recommend Starling Bank, Revolut and Monzo. I've used all these three and they are really good. But don't just get one travel card, get two or three. I've even got four because I'm always traveling. If you happen to lose one of the travel cards, you've got a backup. I've even had an ATM eat one of my travel cards. I never got it back. So just be careful, be extra cautious and get a few of these. Now talking about money, let's talk about safety with money. And something I highly recommend is splitting your money up into two or even into three. And that's the same goes with the cards. Split them up into different piles in different places. So if you lose a pile or a bag gets stolen or your wallet gets stolen, you're gonna be okay because you've got these other different piles. You could hide money under your shoe insole, you could hide a card in your shoe insole, you could hide everything in there and then you probably couldn't fit the shoe on. Basically what I'm saying is split your money up into different places. Obviously you could have some money in your wallet and then some money in your bag and that'll be fine. You don't actually need to put it in a shoe, that's a bit silly. Just an extra little tip, try and use a credit card when booking flights because this is just going to give you a little bit more protection and I found out the hard way losing money on flights during COVID times. Now number four is research the ATMs you use in a foreign countries. Different banks are going to have different withdrawal fees. For example, some banks in Malaysia may charge you 3%. So if you withdrew a thousand US dollars, you'd actually have to pay 30 USD on top of your thousand. Whereas some banks don't cost you anything and so you're just going to get the thousand USD. Now number five is something which I need to talk to you about which is vital when you're traveling and that is travel insurance. You may know now but Amelia and I have been using Safety Ring for over a year now and they have kindly partnered with us on today's video. One of the best things about Safety Ring is the flexibility when it comes to dates and locations. They don't require you to put certain countries or exact dates and allow you to be flexible and change plans as you travel. I know traveling is often so dreamy and perfect but things do go wrong as I've found out in the past. And that's why making sure you are covered is so important. Safe Doing has great features which covers any mishaps when traveling with coverage for lost luggage, travel delays, natural disasters, and personal liability. Getting yourself covered is very easy with automatic monthly payments. If you're going on a short trip, then there's actually an option to get covered for a minimum of just five days to cover that long weekend away, allowing you to put a start date and an end date. On your next trip, make sure you get yourself covered with a reputable company like Safety Wing and you'll be protected if something happens to go wrong. Click the top link in the description to get yourself covered with Safety Wing. So number six, this is one of my favorite little tips and this is book directly with your hotel, hostel, guest house because it's gonna save you quite a bit of money. When you book a place on booking.com, they obviously take a cut. So if you book directly, you're gonna get cheaper rates. To get these cheaper rates, either look at the hotel website, message them on Instagram, call them up and you'll likely get a much better rate than on booking.com or Agoda. Now number seven, and this is a big one, and this is Joel's guide to booking the best accommodation. Before booking accommodation, there's a few questions I ask myself before I book it. And that's number one is where is it located? Is it in the center? Is it near the activities you wanna do in the city? If not, is there good transport there? Is there a good metro bus stop nearby so you can easily get to the center of the city? Number two, is there a kitchen? Is it self-catered? Because this is gonna cost you more money if you're looking to go to restaurants, etc. Maybe that's in your budget, but not for everyone. Number three, this is more for hostels. Is it a social hostel? Is it a party hostel? Is it a chilled hostel? What kind of vibe are you looking for? And read the reviews. This is gonna be my little rating of how good a place is. If you're looking at somewhere rated between nine and 10, this place is gonna be amazing as long as it's got more than 10 reviews. Otherwise, they could be fake. Eight and nine, it's a pretty solid place. I'd always stay at them. Seven to eight, still pretty decent. 
Under six, this is where it's gonna get a little bit iffy. Honestly, I try and stay away, even if it's quite good value. Under five, I mean, I wouldn't go there unless it is dirt cheap. Before booking your next accommodation, ask yourself these questions and book yourself a great place to stay. Now, number eight is something I've only started using more recently and it's gonna save you a lot of space. Trust me, let me get something. A packing cube. Actually, this is a Tropic Fill wardrobe and basically you put all your clothes in here and you squish it down and then you can actually hang it up as well. And it's really awesome. But if you want a more cheaper option and kind of more traditional, then you can get packing cubes on Amazon and I'll link some down below. If you've got loads of tech with you, I actually use this little gadget holder tech thing, I don't know what to call it, but it's really cool. So you can put your wires up here, you can like put all your, well, I've got my travel adapter in here. It's just really good and organized because when you get to a place, you just take out all your packing cubes and stuff and it's not everywhere. It's not all on the floor, it's neatly in places. It's a game changer. Now number nine is get yourself a filtered water bottle. And I'll show you these couple of examples in a minute. But I'm gonna tell you why you actually need one. Say you've just woken up, like me, a little bit drunk after a full moon party in Thailand. You're thirsty, you're hungover, you don't wanna go anywhere, you don't want to go to the shops to get some water. Well, my friend, you can drink the water with a filtered water bottle because all you gotta do is fill it up with a tap and you can drink and it's not gonna harm you. It's all filtered, it's fine, it's good to drink. So first example, we've got this life straw and basically it's like a little straw and you basically suck the water up and it goes through this filter. You can drink pretty much any water you want apart from salt water, don't do that. Now this one is called a Lark UV filter bottle and basically it uses UV rays to clean the inside. I've heard it's like boiling water 20 times. It's that good and cleans the bottle really well. It's also known for like self cleaning because obviously stagnant water gets a bit I don't know, not nice. Obviously using filtered water bottles saves a lot of plastic as well. So try and use them when you can. And also it's a good investment because obviously you don't need to buy water. Now number 10, and I don't actually have any with me right now, but that is bring travel wash. Travel wash is gonna save you so much money washing your clothes. In a lot of Southeast Asian countries, you can actually get a laundry service and they kind of do everything for you and fold it but that's gonna cost you quite a bit of money. Another cheap option is to use a laundromat rather than a laundry service, because you can go in, wash your clothes yourself. It's just much cheaper. Now, number 11 is bring a universal travel adapter. You can even get like an extension leads if you need loads of plugs for charging cameras, laptops, etc. It's also got multiple charging things and a big plug socket here, and it's got all the different countries. Perfect. So number 12 is make sure you bargain because bargaining is very common in places like Southeast Asia, India, Sri Lanka. It's gonna save you a lot of money. Say you've gone into a market, locals are gonna hike up those prices and make it really expensive most of the time. Whereas you can actually bargain them down and you can get some really good deals, even though you're still probably paying more than the local price. Just make sure you're ethical when you're bargaining because honestly, a dollar or two is not really gonna break your bank and make you have to go home from traveling. Now, number 13 is about food poisoning. And if you're traveling longer term, then the likelihood of you getting food poisoning, eating at loads of different restaurants, street food places, trying new foods is fairly likely. The important thing to do is when you get it is don't take Imodium unless you're on a crazy flight or bus journey because this is just gonna block your system. What you need to do is make sure you rehydrate, take rehydration sachets and just make sure you get everything out your system and not clogged up in. Get rid of the toxins out of your body. Now I'm not a doctor so don't take everything I mean like a doctor but from experience this is what you need to do. Now number 14 is more for long-term travelers and that is make sure you have a good rough plan but don't overbook, don't book things in advance because things change. You might see a new festival you suddenly want to go to, you might want to travel with a new friend you've just met and by committing yourself months in advance to flights, hotels, it's just, it's not good. When you're traveling long-term, you want to be flexible, book spontaneous trips, flights, stuff. Just don't glue yourself down when you're a solo traveler, especially. Now, number 15 is something completely the opposite, but sometimes you have to book in advance. Things like Christmas, New Year, even big summer holiday stuff, you're going to have to book in advance because the hotels, accommodation, flights are going to book out way in advance and they're going to be more expensive the longer you leave it. If you're looking to go away in Europe in July, August, book in advance because it's going to be expensive. Now number 16 is make sure you download offline stuff. I'm talking offline Google Translate so you can 
speak to anyone if they don't speak your language. Um, offline maps, you can do that on Google Maps. My Maps is really good as well. But also if you, you've got a long journey, you don't have internet, download offline Netflix, offline music, so you're actually entertained and in, you know, you're enjoying the journey a bit. Now moving on to number 17, and that's about staying connected. You can actually get a local SIM card or even an eSIM. Recently, I've more swayed between eSIMs because they're so easy to download. You can download them before you're even in the country. So as soon as you land on that flight, you are connected up to the local internet. Local SIM cards are often a little bit cheaper and you get better deals, but eSIMs much easier. I previously used Nomad and Aerolo and I'll put the discount codes for them here because you get $3 off both if you use this discount code. Now number 18, something not quite as nice and that is not everywhere has toilet paper. Sometimes you're in the middle of nowhere, you know, they just don't have toilet paper. So just always keep a bit of tissue on you just in case you need to go. Now number 19, something which is actually gonna save you a lot of money and that is get yourself a carry-on bag because you don't need to pay for checked baggage. And that honestly adds up every time you take a flight if you're doing a longer trip. The only thing to keep in mind is when you're taking liquids on carry-on is just be warned, you're normally only allowed about 100 mil of each product. Now number 20, when I'm in another country, I like to use ride hailing apps. These are things like Grab, Gojek, Uber, Bolt, Lyft. These are so much safer because you can actually rate everyone. The other thing is you don't actually have to speak the language because they've already got the exact destination you're going to. And you don't have to bargain over the price and discuss the price because Uber or Grab do it for you. Previously in taxis, you have to bargain lots and you can get scammed and it's good just to avoid those things and go with these other companies. Sometimes they won't get as much money, but I always like to tip the drivers because it's just giving back to people who are using fair and trusted prices. Now, number 21 is set yourself a budget. If you've got a budget for a trip, you're a bit tight and you've got money aside, then budget yourself every day. I actually use an app called Wonder Wallet and it basically puts in all the costs of every day and you can set yourself budgets and how much you've got left to spend. And it's just gonna save you not spilling and going overboard. I highly recommend getting one of these apps which tracks your expenses because it's gonna save you money and make sure you stick to that budget. Number 22, and this is something I see so many people doing, and that is don't exchange your money at the airport. These fees are so much more expensive than if you're in the city or somewhere else at home. They just, they charge you so much money because it's easy. Whereas if you put in a bit more effort, you go somewhere else, you're gonna save quite a bit of money on these exchanges. Now, the other thing you can do is actually go to an ATM in the airport, because pretty much every airport has an ATM. Make sure you check how much the ATM is gonna charge you, but it's often cheaper than the travel changing exchange places. Now, number 23, this is the final one. And this is quite a big one, because this can save you hundreds, if not thousands of pounds or dollars or anything and that is going shoulder season or going off season. It may not be the best weather, but it's gonna save you so much money. Hotels are cheaper, flights are cheaper, food can sometimes be cheaper. You're gonna get so many better deals and it's gonna save you so much money. Going in wet season is not always as bad. It just rains in the afternoon a little bit. Temperatures in Europe in September, October may be a bit cooler, but you haven't got the crowds around you. Traveling in off season or shoulder season is not as bad as you think it is especially if you're on a strict budget. I hope you found those 23 travel tips really useful. But guys, I've got a super exciting trip coming up and I'm gonna be creating so many epic, amazing videos. You, don't even, you won't even believe where we are going. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video, which is gonna be incredible. So go down, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.